and share with each other. So if you can make it to that, that's wonderful. They would love to have you back there. The ladies' group is still meeting Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. at the Fortner House. And if you need directions or a phone number. Yeah? Yes, I mean Patty's house and John's house. No, Fortner's. <laughs> yeah. There was, you know, there was, a, there was kind of a thing going around that we always call it the lady, you know, the lady's house. It's, oh, it's Sue's house. Oh, it's Patty's house. Oh, it's Debbie's house. No, and, and John's like, well, no, it's my house too. <laughs> so it's the Fortner house. Yes. Um, so, but we're so blessed to be able to, uh, to do that over there. And we have a little bit of breakfast and, and the ladies study together. And, and we really have a good time fellowshipping um, over there. Now, February 14th, two weeks from today, already, <laughs> we have the That's Amore potluck. It's a, an Italian potluck. We'd love to have you join us. There's a sign-up sheet. Um, if you have not signed the sign-up sheet, uh, you can see Helen back there and put something down that you might be able to bring for that. I'm still waiting to see what you're bringing, Carl. So he doesn't know yet. Um, <laughs> but anyway, please sign up if you haven't yet. We're going to have a great time and, and fellowship and food after church on February 14th. Now next week, February 7th, I can't believe January is over. Anyway, next week, February 7th, the leadership... Is it Patty's birthday next week? <laughs> Carl says, let's go to Patty's house. <laughs> um, oh. And then <laughs> we'll invite John, they say. <laughs> anyway, um, next week, February 7th, the leadership team is meeting after church, and lunch will be provided. Okay, so if you're part of the leadership team, don't worry about lunch. Uh, come in, uh, it's about an hour long um, leadership meeting. Okay, um, if you're interested in being a part of any of the ministries of the church, please talk to us. There's lots of ways that you can help. We just started uh, Martha's Table, which is a ministry for potlucks and, and meals for the, uh, for the sick and uh, just meals for anybody in general. And uh, we love to eat around here. So anyway, Martha's Table uh, is, is the newest mission uh, thing that we're doing here from the church. And if you have an idea also for a ministry that you want to either start or be a part of, please talk to Jim or I, and we would love to, to talk to you about that because we want everybody to be involved and uh, be a part of things. Okay, don't forget on Tuesday nights at 630, Blast airs on Facebook Live. So, and then if you don't catch it live, you can always go back and look at it too. It's about 30 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes, um, and we talk a, uh, just a short little Bible study, and we'd love to have everybody join us for that little midweek refresher of God's Word. Uh, rem a reminder of the tithes and offerings in the back there. We have the offering uh, that you could give underneath the clock there. If you're here in locally or in here in the sanctuary, you can give back there. You can also give online at www.pwlivingwater.org or send in a check uh, to our address and as God leads you to do that. And then uh, communion, we have a table back there. It's always back there for anyone who feels they would like to have communion with their family or uh, just to have a little bit of quiet time and prayer alone to have communion, you can do that. We also do it corporately, which we will be doing probably next week. So we'll be doing that as well next week, okay? And then um, remember that the boxes in the back on the table are for the Pueblo Rescue Mission, and we're collecting dry goods and canned goods for that. And you can just put them in the boxes there, and as they get full, we'll take them down to the Pueblo rescue mission and then we'll fill them up again okay so that's one of our little ministries there and the ladies ministry is challenging you again and this isn't just for ladies but this is the week six of our challenge now I have to admit week five was walking on a piece of equipment you know for a walk or going for a walk and you know I, I could blame the snow but the snow wasn't there all week and I do have a treadmill but I still managed not to do that all week. And so now I have to make myself do that. <laughs> this week. <laughs> I know. Uh, 
So I failed at that challenge. But you know what? This one's going to be fun this week. This one is read the book of Esther. Okay? It's four, four chapters. I think it's, it's not very long. So you can read the book of Esther and study the book of Esther this week. That's the weekly challenge from the ladies. And I believe that is all of the announcements for today. And I think I got them all because now I have them on two pieces of paper so that I don't forget. So what's that? Oh, at, I wanted to uh, talk a, a really quickly about this little table back in the corner. And I know on live stream you can't see it. But uh, there's a little table with uh, some flowers. At the end of the service, last week, if you were a part of the service, even on live stream, you may have noticed we had a, a, uh, a call to the altar last week that was just amazing. It was awesome to see people come up and pray and um, just give their prayers to the Lord. And we, we know that uh, as the Spirit leads, we're going to be doing that um, as much as we can. But there are times that maybe you just want a little bit of prayer or you want to know more about what we're doing or you want to know more about the message or maybe you are a little bit more private and say, you know what, I really want to ask the Lord into my heart, but I don't, I'm really uncomfortable in front of a lot of people. That's what that table is going to be for at the end of the service. And Carl has agreed to meet anyone back there at the end of the service, okay? So if you need a special prayer or anything, please feel free at the end of the service to just uh, go over and talk with Carl in the, in the corner there. And Not that we're putting you in the corner, okay? But... <laughs> but but it's a, it's a private place to be able to, to pray and, and um, talk with someone, okay? And then also, you're always welcome to reach out to Jim or to me or any of the, uh, any of the ladies or men here. Uh, we will all uh, be willing to pray or talk with you, okay? So we just want to open that up and let you know that we're here for you, and we would love to worship with you and pray with you and just have you be a part of our body, okay? All right, if I could get the worship team to come up, I think we're ready to worship the Lord. Uh -huh. I could only walk in these shoes. Jeez. Okay. You can stand with us if you'd like to while we worship. Seems kind of quiet in here this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you, Is anybody here to to praise the Lord? Amen. Okay, that's better. Yay. Yeah. Because uh, that's why we're here, right? Okay. Shake before you 
demons who run away at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great i am 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 and we sing leaves us alone right he's there with us constantly and he will never leave us alone even in our difficult times and in our hard times Did we ever walk 
the Lord Never once did you leave us on a road You are faithful, God, you are faithful Every step we are breathing in your grace Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise You are faithful, God, you are faithful you are faithful, God. You are faithful. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. I just love that song because, let me look closer here, when we're not faithful, he is. Amen. He never leaves us alone, no matter what. ourselves sometimes. Sing it with me, men. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. 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 And he shall lift you up higher and higher. And he shall lift you up. Thyself in the sight of the Lord. I want thyself in the sight of the Lord. I want thyself in the sight of the Lord. I want thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up higher and higher. And he shall lift you up. pray real quick. Father God, we just thank you so much for this morning. We thank you that we can gather together to worship you, Lord, whether we're on live stream or here in the sanctuary, that we're all in one accord worshiping you, Lord Jesus, because you tell us wherever two or three are gathered, there you are. We thank you so much for that. We ask that you bless the rest of this service and, and the message that we're about to receive and that um, we can just take it to heart, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, Pastor Ron.
Good morning. I'm excited about being here today. Are you? Great. We're going to have a lot of fun. Now, I love flowers. And uh, my wife loves flowers. And guess what she did? She went out and bought some flowers for us this morning. Isn't that neat? Now, would you like one? Helen, you want to help me with this? Uh, would you like to have a flower? Okay. Well, she's going to pass them out. You pick out your flower and put it in your hand. Now, uh, okay. <laughs> all right, she's got enough out, I think, for all of us here. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to describe the flower. Like, is it soft or bushy or fuzzy? Is it colorful? Did God make it strong or did God make it beautiful? Or did God make it part beautiful and part strong? So, as I, uh, I'm going to have you to tell me about your flower. Spikes on it. All right. All right. And then? So. Oh. Oh, you got pretty. Mine's pretty. That's pretty. Okay. But you know, I found out something. Cut flowers don't live very long, they start dying immediately. Isn't that sad? I wonder what we can do about it. Does anybody know? What, do we ha what can we do to keep the flowers fresh longer? Put water on them. We can put it in water. So what it means is here, Helen. No, no uh, put it back and put them back in the water. And so we're gonna we're gonna have you just to come back and put your your flower back in the water. Okay. Now, one of the one of the things that, yeah, about this is that now that we got them back in the water, they'll stay fresh a lot longer, won't they? Uh, so sometimes we have to give something back. But I found this out, that in this world, some things, in order to be able to enjoy them a lot, we have to give it back. And then we can, we can have, uh, enjoy it a whole lot more. One of the principles of the church is that to give and to give back is a joy to the Lord. Here's... Here's what uh, Matthew 5, 40 says. Jesus said that if anyone wants your shirt, give him your coat also. You know, if we as a uh, uh, church would just learn to uh, give back to people, this whole world would be a lot better shape than it is, right? So let's, let's uh, just remember that giving is a part of, sh of the joy of sharing. And, uh, and helping other people. So let's pray. Father, we realize that giving does not come to us easily. And we know that giving not only makes you happy, but it makes us happy. And it makes the world a much better place. So help us to learn to give. That you might be happy with us and we might be happy in you. In Jesus' name. Now, after, after church, you can come back to that back, back table back there. And um, are, are you going to uh, – you, you can come and get your flower and take it back. And she's going to give you an, a napkin uh, to wrap it in. And if you want to take another one to your mother or uh, someone else, well, you can take an extra one too. Kids are getting pretty there. Yeah. Um, can, is this one on, or can I use this one? Because I'm not ready just yet. Yeah, yeah. Put it here. Okay. Thank you, John. See, that's why you need a good sound man to keep you straight. And I have a really good one. Praise God. What I'd like for us to do, I'm going to have Brother Justin come up and pray with us. But if I can get us to kind of form a circle of sorts, grab someone's hand close to you. And uh, he is going to pray uh, uh, for a lot of things in our church before we get started. Who 
Good morning, everyone. This is uh, kind of a new thing that Pastor Jim suggested this morning that we'd come up and uh, pray before church as we introduce our pastor and um, hear the word of God. Heavenly Father, I have a, a heavy heart this morning for people that are suffering or people that are sick. I have a brother right now, a very dear friend that's in hospice, and we're praying for Andy Sikora and his family. But Lord, we're praying for this church this morning that you lead us and guide us, Father, that you take care of each and every one of us. Please help us with our needs. We love you, and we thank you for everything you've done. We thank you for this precious church and these amazing people that are around us, and we know they come from you. So, Father, we ask you that you lead Pastor Jim now through this message. And again, lead us and guide us this week. Help us. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. All righty then. Hey, everybody can hear me, I pray so. Notice I've got my spectacles on because what I'm finding as I get younger oh I'm sorry I mean as I get older I need to see better <laughs> and I don't need to have pride about that I just really need to see what I'm doing so I'm wearing my glasses okay so the test question is and it's always been every week what are we talking about what book are we studying James. And why, what, what is so special about James? It is a teaching book. It's a teaching book after something happened. What was that? After we're saved. James wants us to understand how we should act after we're saved. So we're going to be continuing what we talked about last week, if you remember, church, living in the world versus living with God. Okay, and we're going to be talking about James chapter 4, 6 through 12. I think they're up there on the board. Oh, now they're up there. Okay. Let's uh, read through this first. I like to read God's word first. Verse 6 says this, and I'm reading from the King James Version, okay, but you can read any version that you're comfortable with. And um, some of these things I'll try to explain to you because... Um, King James uses some different types of wording. But it was all inspired by God. Amen? Okay. Verse 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Verse 7 says this, and I love this one. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let's look at verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Nigh just simply means draw closer to God, and he'll draw closer to you. Okay? Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Get yourself right to receive God. Okay? Number nine says this, also on the end of eight, ye double-minded. Meaning, basically, you can't focus on God and be focusing on the world. You can't be double-minded about that. Number nine, afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Wow, we'll get into that. Number 10 says this, and we sing about this. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall do what, church? Lift you up. Number 11, speak not evil to one of another brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law, and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There's only one judge. Who is that, church? God. God. Number 12, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judges another? In other words, why are you judging somebody else? Okay, let's go talk about kind of a little overview here. Uh, chapter 4 is dealing with James's warning. He's warning Christians about living a life according to the world's wisdom. The world's wisdom. Hmm. We can be driven by envy. We talked about this last week. And, and, and uh, 
ambition to succeed at any cost. Okay? I'm ambitious. I like to work hard. But we have to look at why we're doing what we do. And I think I said last week, I know I did, that if we're not doing it for God, then what's the point, really? What's the point? We even fight with each other to get what we want. That happens a lot of times outside of the church, but you know what? It happens in the church. I hate that. When people are fighting and can't get along. Okay. You know what's really sad about this? This type of living begins to feel normal to us. You know that? We get comfortable in what we're doing, sinning, and now we're, it's okay to do whatever. This world system that we were born into, we have to go back to the Garden of Eden because the problem, church, is when we are living this way, God sees us as committing adultery against him. Do you know that? We talked about that last week. And it's because we refuse to let go of getting what we want. What we want is more important than what God wants. Our needs, our desires are more important than what God desires for us. So we have to change our way of thinking, okay? Verse 6, James offers a reassurance that if we have been living this way, think about this, we have now not outrun the grace of God. You know, that really gets me, really gets me. How can I live in sin how can I break God's commandments? How can I be out there doing what I want to do and still not outrun the grace of God? What do you guys think about that? That is incredible. Our sins are serious. They're devastating and wicked, but God gives us more grace. You know why? You know why, church? Because he doesn't want any of us to perish. He doesn't want any of us not to see him one day in heaven. He's given us every opportunity right now to repent, to love him, and give up what you're doing. I don't care if it's a small thing, if it's a big thing, if it's something that's keeping you away from communion with God, then you need to give it up. You need to give it up. Oh, Brother Jim, it's just, you know, it's just something I do on the weekends. Or, you know, just my... If you cannot do it with Jesus, if you cannot have him hand in hand with you in what you're doing, then you need to give it up. Okay? He forgives our sinfulness. And by the blood of Christ, Jesus, he gives us the good that we have not earned. We haven't earned God's goodness. Do you know that? Well, I, you know, I go to church and I put money in church and I do this and I do that. Are you committed to serving a holy God? Have you and are you sold out for Jesus? What does that mean? You give everything to God. Everything. Number six continues by saying that God opposes, opposes the proud. Doesn't like haughty, proud people. And we're prideful when we refuse to trust God that he will supply our needs. Do you know that? That's pride. We have the right to say God won't do it or can't do it. Look out. Look out. God won't do that. I just don't believe it. I don't think God will do this for me. Were you there when the heavens were made? As God told Job, hmm? Were you there when I made you? God won't do what you ask of him in his will? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I'm telling you, he will. But I don't like that. I don't, I, I, I really don't, I want it this. What God does for you is going to be the very best thing that you could ever have in your life. Ever. Ever. Listen to me. When we act in a prideful manner, let me tell you, 
We're attempting to be the God of our own lives, and that's what's going on right now. Do you know that, church? Hear me. People are so much about themselves and so little about God, they become their own God. This is what I want. This is what I need. Well, this is the way I am. This is how I feel, and people don't like it. They can just build a bridge and get over it. Look out. Look out. Because God is listening to you. And you start your little funky self over that bridge, and he'll just tear it down underneath you. Look out. He wants us to humble ourselves before him. It's hard for us. Even as God-believing Christians, it's hard for us to humble ourselves at times. Because we feel we know better. I got this. I got this, Brother Jim. I've done it myself. I got this. Then it gets so messed up, and then I go to God. Oh, Lord, I really screwed up. Can you help me? Yeah. But you're going to have to do this. There's going to be a consequence. There is going to be some things you're going to have to go through. Oh, but can you do it without all that? No. You know why he does that, church? To teach us to come to him first. That's why he does that. If we could think a minute, reverse our position and go, okay, I need to go to God first. I need to see what Jesus wants me to do first. Not we do it and then when it falls apart and crashes down on our head, then we go, oh, God. You know what, though? He even shows grace when we do that. He even shows grace when we do that. I think about Moses. No, Lord, I, I don't speak well, and I, I can't go talk to the Israelites. I, I don't want to. I'm asking you to go. Well, I, you know, I got all these problems and issues. And I did see you in the burning bush. The point I'm trying to make, if you want to have a successful life, want to be blessed, want to have some of those things that God wants you to have, then you need to give your life completely to an almighty God. Surrender everything. Don't hold none. Don't put, put little, that little box in the, your heart there, those little boxes in there. Don't put a lock in there and lock it and say, God, you can have this, but you can't have this side. Uh -uh. Here's my heart, Lord. Take all of me. See, James talks about God seeing enmity with the world as being adultery, cheating on him with the world. He opposes our pride when we live this way. And you know what, church? This is a scary one. He takes it personally. He takes it personally. He gives us grace to be humble. So how should we respond when we realize we have been on the world's path again? All of us have been there. Every one of us. No one in here that hasn't walked away from God. Jesus answered this. Submit to God again. Uh-oh. That means give up what you're doing and go back to God. It's simple, yet it's hard. Submit to God again. Okay? Give up getting what you want and willingly receive all the good he desires for you. It's better. So much better. You know, we have to surrender our battles. I thought about this one. Surrender our battles. To achieve our own desires and turn to serve others instead. Wow. Surrender our battles and serve others. Hey, that sounds a bit like a church family. Hmm? That's what we're doing here. We love on each other. We give it up. And we give it up for God. Not because we think we're going to be a hero or something. We do what we do in this church for a holy God. That's why we do what we do. Verse 7, James says this. We must resist the devil. That's tough sometimes, isn't it? 
Can you agree? It's tough to resist the devil. Sometimes what you're doing out there is fun. It's fun to be bad. Did you know that? Oh, man, this feels good. Four times. For a season, it's good. Then it's not so good. The worldly wisdom that we have been following is in part the devil and God. That's God's enemy. Ever since God booted him out of the heavens, that's been his enemy. But did you know what? Satan has been instrumental in engineering this system of self-service. He is awesome with this. Self-service from the very beginning of history. He comes to a young lady in the garden and he says, you won't die if you eat that. I won't. No. You'll be like God. And you'll know what God knows. God's just messing with you. You go, you go ahead. Let me tell you, church, look where we're at because of that. Huh? Because of that sin, because of her not humbling herself and saying, no, I'm not going to do this. Thank God for his plan for our salvation. James is clear that if we resist the path of the world and resist the devil, guess what? He will flee from you. Did you know that? You'll be tempted. And how I do it, and it works for me, is I start praying right away. Oh, God, Lord, don't let me be mad at this person. Don't let me be upset with this person. Don't let me say something I will regret. Don't let me do something hurtful. We don't always get it right, but if we do that, we'll get it right more times than not. Did you know that, church? Sue will say something to me that kind of chaps me and burns me a little bit. Hmm. What should I do? Should I turn my back and pretend I don't hear her? No, that doesn't work because she'll be right there. Honey, did you hear me? Yes. <laughs> so what should I do? Because she's very persistent. She doesn't she want to go to sleep with a battle. Sometimes being a man, guys, we like to go to sleep with that battle a little bit. We can stew on it all night. Toss and turn in our sleep. I'm going to ask God when we get to heaven, why did he make us that way? What's wrong? <clears throat> I'm mad at you. Why? I just told you the truth, and I hate when she says that. Because 99, three quarters percent of the time, she's right. I just shared something. When I just shared my heart with you, how are you going to fight that one, church? <laughs> I just shared my heart with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's humbling ourselves. If we can humble ourselves here and here, we can humble ourselves with God. It's a whole process, church. Humbling ourselves. Not saying something back, and then they say something back, and then you say something. Pretty soon you're just at opposite ends of the house. Okay, kid. I'm going to tell you, it's the same way with you guys sitting there looking all cute and pretty and everything and handsome. It's the same with you guys. Stop touching my stuff. Oh, I hate that one. I'm about ready to take all the stuff and throw it out in the street. Don't look at me. Well, you're sitting across the table from each other eating breakfast, your Fruity Loops, or whatever they are, and you can't look at this person? He's looking at me, Jim. I am too. Uh -uh. We need to be gracious. Sometimes a little ingenuity would be smart. I'm going to eat after a few minutes. Why? Oh, uh, I just don't want to start a problem. Oh, I love it when they do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Big brother picks on little brother. Sit face. I hear the feet coming. Jim, he's calling me names. Big brother's grinning. <laughs> Behind him. <laughs> Don't call your brother names. Don't do that. 
That's not being Christ-like. These two guys are cracking up because it just <laughs> happened this past week. Don't do that. I got to tell you, AJ is really sweet. The big one there, he is. He's ornery sometimes, though. But his brotherly stuff, I think, is kind of cool. Sometimes. Okay. Anyway. See, the world's wisdom that we've been following is part, is part of the devil. Satan is engineering all this stuff. But if we resist him, he'll leave. He'll leave, church. How many times do we have to tell him no? I don't know. It's a good question. I told him no once, but he keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. Look what Satan did to Job. What did he do to Job? Took everything away. Killed his family. Did all this stuff. Job never once wavered with what he believed about his God. That's some serious faith. Me and God might have been talking in the field, might have been wandering around muttering to myself, now wait a minute, you took my wife and my kid? Okay. You know, Job never wavered. You know, Satan is really good about us getting telling lies to ourselves, getting us believing something that's not right, taking us off track, putting on his track. He's awesome at that. But I'm going to tell you something. If you resist Satan, and I know there's people say, there's no Satan. You know what? He wants you to believe that one. That's a big lie. He loves it when you do that. Oh, okay, I'm not here. I'm not here. You're out there writing in the streets doing all kinds of dirt and stuff, but I'm not here. It's not me. Satan puts a thought here. He just puts a thought here. If you resist the devil, he will not remain there. He will leave you. The submission of the truth of the word of God, that's why he leaves. You use the word of God. There's people in the church that pray because Satan comes at them and they pray. And that's what you do. And you use God's word right here. I'm going to tell you a story. The men had been fishing all night long. Listen to me. They were hungry, tired, irritated, and depressed about not catching not even one fish. Sounds like me when I go out. <laughs> Never catch one. I'm irritated, depressed, and tired. Anyway, the leader of this group with this motley crew of fishermen, a rugged, outspoken, somewhat pushy, and even arrogant man said, I'm done with this. We've been fishing all night. We have nothing to show for all our hard work. Let's pack it in. Let's go home. As this tall man named Peter looked up, he glanced at the shore. You know, church, i got to say something. Isn't it great when we look up and who's there? Jesus. Who did Peter see on the shore? Jesus, looking at him. Probably smiling a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they're going to catch any fish until I tell them they can catch fish. You know, I don't know what Jesus thought, but I love this. Peter looks up. And I love what Jesus says. But he didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus says this. Children, have you any meat? Jesus was so unassuming, so laid back. He didn't say, you stupid, you should be fit. Have you any meat? How disarming was that? That's the God we serve. He's not going to attack you. He's there to help you. They answered him, mainly Peter. No. I could hear Peter. You're all right. Okay? And Jesus said to them, listen to me, cast the net on the right side. He specifically said right side. Cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. You see, these guys, these three apostles were casting their nets. And by casting their nets on the right side, Jesus was going to do a miracle. If we believe, if we hear, if we obey, then Jesus got something for you. He's going to bless us. 
That's what he said. Cast your nets on the right side. A miracle was waiting for them. I can almost hear what they were thinking. I could hear Peter. Who is this dude? Who, who, who is this Vagazi, as Carl would say? We've been fishing all night. And you're out here, and I'm a, I'm a good fisherman. This is what I do for a living. And you're out here, and you're trying to tell me to cast my nets on the right side. You know you can't catch fish on the right side. That's deeper water. And Jesus says, try again. Try again. Cast your nets on the right side. There's some dualism right there. Not the left, but the right side, the good side, God's side. Okay, but it's not going to work. We will do it, but what a waste of time. So they cast their nets on the other side, the Bible says. They put their nets in the water, and they were filled with so many fish, they couldn't even pull them into the boat. How about that? Couldn't pull them in the boat. And when they finally got them in the boat, the boat almost went down. You see, church, when we humble ourselves, get this, before God, he will do what? Lift us up. When we submit ourselves under God's authority, he will fill our nets with so many blessings that we can hardly receive them. That's what he was showing the disciples. We as Christians need to submit to God. In humility, you must acknowledge that all our plans are dependent on him. And he can change your situation at any moment. Do you hear what I said? If you acknowledge that God is God, he will change your situation at any moment, any time. Verse 8, look at this. Verse 8 asks some questions. If we've been living a life according to a worldly wisdom, driven by our own selfish ambitions, what should we do? Okay, if we've been out in the world, we've been doing this, what should we do? All right. How should we get back to heaven's wisdom, trusting God, to provide all the good we need and can get from him? Focusing on God and then others. James in verse 8 calls us to draw near to God. That's the secret. How do we do that, church? How do we draw nearer to God? One is we talk to him. Praying is talking to God. Well, I don't know how to pray. Do you know how to talk? Well, yeah. Talk to God. Do we need to be elaborate? We don't need to be like the Pharisees. Oh, God, standing in the court praying all these prayers. We just need to come to God humbly and ask him into our lives and repent of our sins. It is simple. Draw close to God. Guess what? Here's what gets me, church. I want you to get this. You mean to tell me a holy God that made me, that made everything, designed this world, will draw close to me? Is that what you're telling me, brother? That's exactly what I'm telling you. You have a direct connection to God. You don't need to go to anybody else. You don't need to go to another man or another woman. You can go straight to the man, if you will. You know that? God responds and he moves closer to us. I love that. We don't need to fear anything. Boy, if God is on our side, who can stand against us? Think about that, church. Who? No one. You know what? I'm going to tell you, this is an incredible act of mercy by God. You know why? Because God owes us nothing. What? No. The God that we serve owes us nothing. We owe him our lives. Do you know that? Why? Because he sent his son to die for us even when we didn't care about him, love him, or believe in him. He sent his son Jesus to die for us. And Jesus could have said, no, Father, I ain't dying for any fools down there. Look what they're doing down there. I'm not going. 
He didn't sin. He didn't bother. You know, the only thing that bothered Jesus was being separated from his father. That's it. That bothered him. Such tremendous grace on God's part to come in our direction. Oh, man, he's praying. I'm going to be right there. Think about this. Oh, he's fellowshipping with his wife. He's loving his wife. I'm going to be right there. A mom who loves their children. I'm going to be right there. Little things. Oh, they're reading the scriptures. I'll be right there. You know, God tells us, or James talks about cleaning our hands. That's symbolism. Wash our hands. Purify our heart. Get ready to receive God. We need to get ready. What he's saying here, church, get this, please, is to turn away from our sin and serve God and allow him to begin a brand new work in us. That's awesome to change us, change our thoughts, what we do, who we are. Jameson continues in 9 to describe the process of repenting from worldly self-reliance and ambition. It is a process. So far we need to submit. We talked about that. We submit to God and resist the devil, and we draw near to God as he draws near to us. I talked about us cleaning our hands. I know people do that now with COVID. Oh, oh i got to wash my hands. Oh, i got to wash. i got to go take a shower. Okay. You know, if we would treat God, and have the tenacity like we do with COVID. Wash your hands and become holy to God. Man, it would be something. What a change in the world. Do you believe that, church? If we could turn around and treat God like we do other things that are important in our lives, we make God the most important thing in our life. That would be amazing. James is calling us in verse 9 to engage in emotional response. I want you to get this to our sinfulness. This is tough. He is calling us to cry and be mournful about our sin. I don't want to cry about my sin. You should. Well, I asked God to forgive me. Did you? Cry about our sin. I know people in this church and I just love them so much, they're completely broken about sin and what's going on in the world. Broken. And they weep. Sometime soon I will get to praying. And the Holy Spirit will come and we will weep about our sin and what's been going on. We need to have that kind of confession to God. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Show it outwardly. outwardly. He doesn't want us to be that way all the time, but I think there's a time of confession and in mourning and ask God to change your heart. I tell you, the closer you get to God, you can't help from doing that. I'm going to be honest with you. The closer I draw to God when I know I'm not tracking with him right away and I come back, I'm broken. I don't want to hurt him, church. You should feel the same way. I don't want to hurt him. I know we as Christians should be known for our joyfulness. We should be. But we also should be people who are repentant. We need to go through a season of repentance. I like that, what James says, a season of repentance. You know, the Israelites, we laugh about them. Oh, man, God did this for them, parted the sea, he fed a manna and stuff. And you know what, church, we're no better. I bet if I was out there marching along, I probably would have grumbled right along with them. Where's the water? I'm thirsty. Here, think about this. Here's God with a pillar of fire behind me at night 
and a, pill, and a cloud going before me by day. And I'm walking along complaining. How do we do that? Huh? How do we do that? I've given you everything. That's what God says. And we complain. We're no different than the Israelites. We'd be the same way. Probably worse. Be mad because somebody else is driving a better car than we as we're going through the desert. Church, when we've been living for ourselves, it should make us sad. It does me. I don't want to live for me. I want to live for God, and I want to live for other people. Does that make me a patsy for everything? No, that makes me a man that is after God. That's what it does. God even said no sometimes when people were going the wrong way. He made a braided whip. Whip people out of his uh, temple. If we've been living by ourselves, for ourselves, we should feel sad. We should be provoked to grieve the last days, hours, moments, minutes in pursuit of worthless things. I'm going to tell you a little story about me. Some of you will appreciate this. I wanted, back in the days, a pair of white Super Bell bell bottoms. Yes, sir. <laughs> Shut up, Carl. I wanted the fake silver shirt that the buttons would start right here. I couldn't do that now because I got the Dunlap disease where the belly's Dunlapped over the belt. But anyway, can't do that. And I bought a super, I wanted a super-sized bottle of Brut Cologne. Boy, Brut Cologne. Man, you could take that off and the birds would start falling out of the sky. <laughs> Stuff was now. <laughs> oh, Bobby didn't remember. Yeah, I used to bathe in Brut. Mm -hmm. My parents would say, James, we can smell you a block away coming with that stuff on. But I was cool. I was cool. Let me tell you the story now. I also wanted a pleather jacket. Whoa. Whoa. Pleather jacket was a combination of plastic and fake leather. <laughs> Put that thing on, you know, it wouldn't fit right. Put it on, you cool though. You had you had, had to do a walk down, you know, I had a little walk. I had a little walk, you know. Yeah, I was cool. Yeah, with that brute. Chick magnet, y'all. But you know, the funny thing about pleather was, <laughs> hear me, <laughs> I think it had a memory to it because you didn't want to get it uh, wet. You didn't want to wrinkle it. Not too much. Because if it stayed, if it got wet, it tend to stay wet. And if it got stretched, it tend to stretch. One time I left my pleather jacket in my car. Yes, sir. And the sun shone in there. And I must have scared every people in the block because it looked like a dead person. <laughs> and it was just my jacket. Okay? Let me tell you. And I also had to, pair, had to have a pair of Stacy Adams 4-inch platforms. Look out now. You look out now. I was in it. Yeah. Yeah, I was tall and idiot too. Um, I worked hard to get the money to buy these things. And I was determined to be cool and hip. And these clothes, like I said, a chick magnet. So one crisp fall, one crisp fall day, I was walking to the student union. I'm gonna tell you, where almost everyone hung out at K State. And yes, I was wearing my chick magnet clothes. Church, I was so fly and chill. Listen to this, on this particular day that I put the C in cool. Put the C right in cool. Nobody was cooler than Tim. I was approaching the front area where all the chicks hung out. I don't know where that patch of ice comes from. I, I don't know where it came from. I took a step in my brand new four inch Stacy Adams platforms and down I went. Oh my gosh. It was not pretty. I'm going to tell you, George, it was not pretty. My left leg went to where my right leg went. And my <laughs> right leg went to where my left leg was supposed to be. My arms were reversed. 
and I ripped the bottom out of my tight, bell-bottom white pants. And I was so embarrassed. Oh, the laughter. Lots of laughter. I was humbled beyond being humbled. And then I realized all the chick bag the clothes were not particularly important. You see, I was assessed to want to buy these things because I thought they were the real deal instead of pursuing the real deal, which was Jesus. You see, all that stuff is fake. Just something to wear and try to be cool, but pursuing Jesus is the real deal. We can rest assured that if we pursue God, we will get what we are searching for. Do you know that? An absolute sovereign God that can save us, not something fake like those clothes back then, but something real that will last forever. Do you know that? Number 10, when we continue, James states that everybody wants to be exalted. You know, I've seen that in the church. I want to be exalted. I'm the pastor, or I'm this, or I have this to do. We get enough of that out there. We don't need to bring it into our church, but it does permeate the church. In our lives with each other, we need to be better than that person. Why do we feel that way? Look at me. My dad had a saying, little I, big I, little you, he used to say. What, Dad? It's finally dawned on me. That's pride. You think you're better than someone else? That's pride. And it comes from having the things we think we should have. We want respect. See, the gangs holler, respect. I want respect. Here's what I don't understand. You're going to beat somebody up to get respect? That doesn't make sense to me. You're going to knock somebody down in the ground to get respect. You better respect me. They're going to hate you. Huh? They're not going to respect you. God doesn't require us to do that. James, if you do not pray every single day, I'm going to zap you. Boy, I'm glad he doesn't do that. Well, to be exalted, church, then you have to humble yourself. And guess who exalts you? Jesus. God, you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. God will exalt you if you humble yourself. And you humble yourself before him. Huh? God asks us to quit the world's way of pursuing things. And he, instead he calls us to trust him so that he can exalt us and lift us up. I'd rather have God scrape me up off the ground, put my feet back on a path of righteousness than me trying to pick myself up. No, oh, you can do it. You can you just go out there. We cannot do anything truly apart from God. Do you know that? Do you understand that, church? God has designed us. Designed us. He put a thing in us called the heart, and there's a little space that's reserved for him. Did you know that? That's why people will say, oh, I've got a lot of money, and I've done all these things, and the next thing you read They've killed themselves. I'm thinking about Robert Williams, who was one of my favorite comedians. His thoughts were, I'm so depressed. I'm so empty inside. What am I missing? And there are many others. What is missing? My bank account is fat. I got the home and cars, but I'm empty inside. It's because that spot that's reserved is not filled with Jesus. I'm telling you. That's it. It requires humility. We agree not to make our daily lives about ourselves. God promised us, I love this, to make it about us when he wants to. Do you know that? When he wants to. Paul describes Jesus' life on earth. If Jesus refused, let's think about this church, to fight for his right. Wow. 
we got people marching the street, Black Lives Matters, and this going, and we need to do this. And I'm not making fun of any of that. I'm saying, what are we doing? What are we doing, church? Are we fighting for the wrong things? Huh? Boy, if we could get a million people in the streets to say, Jesus matters. God is my hero. You don't think this world will change? That quick. That quick. Because now the focus is on him. When we make the focus about ourselves, our skin color, or our, 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 the way we think we should be, or what we should do, that focus is on us. And it really doesn't matter. We'll sti still go right on hollering and all this other stuff. We change our direction and focus on Jesus. It matters because God matters to us. Do you understand that? It requires humility. We agree not to make our da daily lives about ourselves. God will lift us up. Jesus refused to fight. And guess what? His father exalted him. Whoa, he went to the grave. He, 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 he was buried. He went through all that stuff. He didn't do it for himself, church. He did it for us. Undeserving dust bunnies that we are. He did it for us. Whoa. He could have come down. Yeah, he could have. Glad he didn't. I'm glad he didn't come down off the throne. Guess what? God calls us to walk the same path. You know that? I'm almost done here. Humility today. Get this, please. Humility today. God's glory forever. Huh? That's awesome. I thought about that when I was researching this message. What? Humility today, God's glory forever. Boy, I want some of that. Chapter 11, James warns us not to turn on each other in slander of judgment. We talked a little bit about this last week. Of course, slander in the Bible, remember, means we question one's authority and we spread hurtful things and lies about each other. We say unkind things about them. James is urging Christians to walk in humility in a relationship with God. Did you know that? And with each other. Twelve. James says that we are more eager. This gets me. This one gets me here. To judge others. Listen to me. To judge others than those who are struggling to do right themselves. In other words, we're quick to judge somebody. We're good at it. And we're messing up ourselves. Oh, look at them. Look what they're doing. Look what they're saying. What's up with that? What is up with that? You have a right to judge. God made you like he made them. And you're going to stand back there and make fun and, and judge them? It's not our job. That's not our job. Well, they're so stupid. They might be. But what's that make you? Hmm. God gives us more grace in response to our sin. For as Christian believers, get this, who are only forgiven only by God's grace, try to make ourselves arrogant judges over other people. You know what that is? That's hypocrisy. You know that? That's being, that's a person that's full of hypocrisy. Hypocritical. I don't want to be around hypocritical people. I want to be around people that will lift me up. Huh? As people dependent on God's grace, we should not presume to pronounce any verdict against others based on our, our judgment. We don't have the right to judge anybody. I heard people try to sneak it in, though. Well... I see what they're doing. I can say what that say that. You don't have the right to judge anybody. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know how they're feeling inside. You don't know how they're hurting. You can't sit there and judge somebody. In summary, I want to say this to you. 
These chapters build on the end of chapter 3, describing how living according to the world's wisdom has led to great conflict with us as Christians. That's what James is talking about. I want you to get this. James says living this way is adultery and it's cheating on God. God calls us to quit our friendship with the world. Stop. Now, let's not say we can't have friends out there. I have a lot of friends out there. They may or may not be a Christian. But I'm not going to judge them. You know what I'm going to try to do? To show them a Christ-like life. I'm going to try to show them God through me. That's what I'm going to try to do. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to quit our friendship with the world. This is a big one. Humble ourselves. Do this one too. Repent of our sins, church. Repent of everything. That feels so good when you do that. You go to God and you open your heart up to him and let him cleanse you. Everything. Don't hold anything in there. I'm keeping this sin for me because it feels good. No, it doesn't. It feels horrible. It feels horrible. If I spoke out of turn to Sue or one of the boys, I really feel bad. A lot of times I have to go to them and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I said. And then I repent back to God. God, I'm sorry I treated that person that way. That's what he wants. Humble ourselves, and then guess what? We'll receive God's grace. We'll receive his grace. Amen. I'm going to pray with us. Let's pray together, church. Father God, we want to be humble people. We want the church to be a loving church, not a judgmental church. We want this church to reach out to others. Help us, oh God, to humble ourselves before you. We need you, God, every day. Change us from what we were yesterday to what we can be in you today. Thank you for an opportunity. Thank you for giving me a message, something to talk about together, these dear saints. And I ask these things in your mighty name. Amen. A great message this morning. If um, Remember, if you need prayer this morning, Carl will be available for you over here. Um, you know, sometimes it's really scary to let go of things when the Lord says, let it go uh, and trust me. And it's hard to trust in the Lord. And, uh, but when we do, when we take that step of faith and we trust in him, he's going to uh, take care of all of that and give us the strength that we need to get through whatever we need to get through and um, to just show us that he's there for us.
trust in you Thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us. You are teaching us to be more like you every day. You are teaching us to be humble. But more importantly, in all of that, Lord, you're teaching us to just trust in you because you're there for us. You're going to be there. You're going to show us what we need to do. You're going to show us um, just how to love each other and just to sit at your feet, Lord Jesus, and let you take care of us. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for being here with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you for teaching us to be like you. Thank you, Jesus, for this day and for this worship service. All the saints here, all those out in live stream, we love you all. We praise God for each and every one of you. Thank you, Lord, for I just thank you. There's nothing more I can say but thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a blessed day. <laughs>